Hello my garden friends, this is Jersey Shore Lisa from MyNJGarden.com and I'm here with you for another garden update. Look how lush it all is, it's doing great. Um, I have had a little bit of trouble with my squash. The first round of zucchini did get taken down by the squash vine borers. I got one zucchini out of it um, and then now I have some smaller plants that are trying to catch up uh, and get into production so I didn't really time the succession of that quite the way I wanted to. Also I have gagoot squash growing uh, and I do did bring in one squash from there and eat it so far but there are plenty of more young squash on those vines and I think I'm going to be fine when it comes to squash. So. It, it, together now we'll take a look at a few other updates that are happening in the garden at the end of July and um, please subscribe to the channel stay with me for all my garden updates I'd love to share them with you and like the video if you do now let's take a look around the garden look guys it's a super late prickly pear cactus flower garden friends this is a new bug for me. I've never seen him before. He's absolutely huge right by my outdoor spigot. I don't know if you can get a good look at him here, but he's massive. I'm actually a little nervous about getting too much closer to him than this because I don't want to startle him. I don't know which way he'll go. <laughs> I'm really close. <laughs> I don't want them flying at me. What is this? This is the tomato bed garden, friends. It is outgrowing the swing support. It is growing up over the fence, back behind it. They are just fantastic plants. And we can take a look and see all the fruit that's setting down below here. I'm very excited about the tomato crop. And the ones here in front, are called tigerella tomatoes and you can see that they're very stripy looking but they're not very big they don't seem to be slicing tomatoes these are probably the biggest ones of the tigerellas but they're pretty cool i'm just not sure when they're ripe if they're supposed to stay green or if they turn red um and then down here in these containers i have some cucumbers but i also have a tobacco plant here that's tobacco which I think is just cool but it looks like it's about to flower now I know that tobacco is in the nightshade family but when you're growing tobacco I'm not sure as a gardener what I should do do I let it flower do I cut the flowers off to encourage more leaves um, I don't know that I'm necessarily going to smoke this tobacco but if you were growing it for a crop what would you do? I think I would probably cut the flowers off to encourage more leafy growth. Um, I'm interested to hear what your thoughts are. Here's a little update of the keyhole garden. This is really the first time I've ever grown a successful, wait, knock on wood because it's not blooming yet, but a successful, what seems to be gigantic sunflower. Now it is in a raised bed. It's in the keyhole garden. So I'd say it's about, Oh, two feet off the ground. But wowzers, it's got to be twice my height at this point. And I do see buds all over it, but it's not blooming yet. I think it's going to be fantastic. I also wanted to show you this pepper plant that came from my husband's uncle Egidio. The plant didn't, the seeds did. He shared with us some seeds well he shared with us peppers uh to use when we were processing olives earlier this year and i saved the seeds and dried them out and planted them and now i have egidio peppers and i think these are going to turn red um and i think they're going to be pretty spicy but i think that's exciting that it doesn't necessarily have to come in a seed packet to grow in your vegetable garden i also have these green bell peppers which look like they are pretty good, good to go, getting ready to harvest. And then a little ball of an eggplant back, back there too. There's another one getting ready. Those are tiny little eggplant. Super fun. 
Also, I wanted to show you, someone um, had commented on a previous video that they were wondering about an update of my Arbicane olive tree. Now, um, when I started that olive tree, I got it just as a little, uh, a little twig um, from a mail a mail away nursery, and I started it over here in the greenhouse. Uh, but during this growing season, I figured I'd bring it outside because the greenhouse got so hot; it's very hot in there right now. So I have the potted plants outside enjoying the sun and the rain and the weather. Um, this is the Arbicina olive. I just started it this spring, so it is the first year. It's little. It's still little. <laughs> it's going to take a while to get going, but I'm okay with it. I have patience. It's welcome. Take your time. This over here is a dwarf pomegranate. I had it potted for a few years. Then I put it in the ground on the south side of the house, the sunny south side of the house. And I did cover it, but it does die all the way back to the ground when it's uh, planted in the ground. And then it has to regrow. Um, so I know that if I leave it in the ground, uh, it, it will regrow every year, but I'll probably never get pomegranates on it because it has to spend so much energy completely regrowing from the ground up. So I'm, I put it back in a pot and now I'm going to bring it into the greenhouse uh, to live in there from now on and bring it out during, during the growing season. That looks like that might be a bud of a flower. So it will flower. Um, it flowered a little bit last year, but as I said, it struggled to, to come back last year. So I used some potting, organic potting mix. I've been fertilizing it and it's come back beautifully. And from now on, it'll get a cozy home in the greenhouse over the winter. This is a quick update about my Moringa cuttings, Moringa. Um, this tree, these cuttings were given to me by my garden friend Paula and she has a moringa tree that lives in her greenhouse. So I will have this moringa tree in my greenhouse once I get it going. But this was one long cutting. I cut it into three. The middle one looks like it isn't going to make it. We'll see. I'm not going to disturb it. Maybe something will come up from the ground. From from the soil. There's a little bit of green left down at the bottom of that stick, but for the most part, it's drying out. This one looks like it wanted to give up, but then stopped and decided against it. And as a matter of fact, it looks like there's a little bit of a leaf bud there uh, that might, might actually come to fruition. So that cutting looks good. And then this cutting in the back, which was the top of the branch, uh, and actually has some leaves going and it still looks really great. So uh, I think that, that we've got two out of three. I, I'm gonna say two out of three ain't bad. Uh, I'm gonna keep up with them and hopefully they will survive so that I can pot them up and they can live in the greenhouse over the winter. Garden friends, this is the fig tree behind the cana lilies that I wrap every year. And I actually did a video um, last fall about wrapping it and when I unwrapped it it looked great uh, this year though it's staying small um, this is a stragglus underneath it which is a nitrogen fixing uh, shrub it's a perennial in the legume family uh, so this should be helping it out quite a bit uh, the cana lilies here, I don't dig them up. They, a few come back every year. Um, so whatever doesn't make it, I would think would be improving the soil underneath because they would rot and uh, add some organic matter. Uh, so the fig does come back. Um, I do think that it just isn't as cold hardy as I would like for it to be. There's no fruit on it and um, this fig, I believe, is a Peter's honey fig. So my plan is to take this down this year. No matter that it, it looks pretty good and it comes back each year, um, I'm tired of wrapping it and not getting any production. So now this is the fifth year for this fig and out it comes. And I'm going to replace it with a much more cold hardy variety, maybe Chicago hardy or Black Mission. Um, Please let me know what you think. And uh, and if there's something I should be doing differently here, do, do they hate that there's other plants planted so close? Um, I'm not sure what's going wrong, but this is an issue for me. 
we can walk further down this row and see the beautiful hibiscus is still blooming and going strong boy oh boy but the bees do love this plant and it's just huge this is the red leafed canna lily and these are just gorgeous too um, many people in new jersey feel like they need to dig them up um, but uh, it comes back every year and i just leave them in the ground they're they're great big tubers and um, this plant just has these fantastic huge leaves that look so tropical and then after that late summer we're going to have pretty red flowers that come out the tops of these leaves and the hummingbirds really dig them and you can see a lot of hummingbirds uh, all around these flowers when they bloom i also wanted to show you the goji berry the goji berry is right here this is a shrub that's in the nightshade family it's also called wolfberry and this is finally flowering so we're gonna get some goji berries soon up here you can see them starting to form some goji berries and uh, as soon as they're red they will be ripe and ready to eat right off the bush from now until frost aren't the black-eyed susans pretty <laughs> it's like they're laughing with you in the garden Look at this, and I was just griping about my squash troubles in my front bed here. I have honey berries and a sweet potato and another sweet potato, another honey berry. And over there, I put some spaghetti squash seeds from a squash in the, at, that I got out of the grocery store. And looks like we're gonna have a spaghetti squash. That's exciting. Look at this, coming up around the beach plums, there's cardinal flower. Cardinal flower is so gorgeous. This is a native perennial flower and hummingbirds really like it, but I think this might be the brightest red I've ever seen on anything I've ever grown, including roses. And that concludes today's update, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me, garden friends. Please subscribe to the channel and like the video. I'd love to share all my garden updates with you. Thanks for watching. Happy gardening. Bye-bye.